Good day everyone. So my propane tank furnace that I made has served me well and still is serving me well. But there's some projects that I need to do that take a little bit more material. So I need to make a bigger, better furnace. So let's make a bigger, better furnace. Now one common thing that people make the bigger furnaces out of is a keg. I had a friend give me a keg. So let's make a furnace out of a keg. Now I'm not a drinker and this is the first time I've ever put my hands on a keg. Thought I might depressurize it. This is the wrong way. Still a little bit of pressure in there. If at first you don't succeed, point the nozzle away from you and try again. Don't do that. Just drilling some holes in it seemed to be a lot easier and a lot less messy to relieve the pressure. Now since I'm using a one inch burner, the vent hole on top should be three or four inches big. This partial roll of duct tape is just about right. I'll simply use it as a template and cut out the middle. Next I need to cut the top off to make the lid. I measured about three inches down from the first weld seam seven inches down from the top. I connected my lines with some duct tape to hopefully give me a good straight edge to cut on. An important note at this point, I should have cut out a center section of the keg. It would have saved me a lot of a headache in the later stages. You'll see, the chamber ended up being far too big and I had to shorten it anyway. Now would have been a better time to do that. As for the bottom here, I didn't want it to be rounded. I wanted to flatten that out. So I put a bolt and washer in there to help lock in place some refractory cement. Now's a good time to put some handles on. In retrospect, I wish I'd used some beefier handles, but these are working okay. I cut the excess bolt off so it didn't interfere with the ceramic insulation. I drilled a series of holes through the lid so I could later put bolts and washers to secure the ceramic insulation to the top of the lid. I burned up several drill bits in the process. Stainless steel is tough stuff. Ceramic insulation is pretty nasty in the lungs, so always wear a respirator when you're using it. I'm using two inch ceramic insulation here. I'll have to fill in this gap later on. These bolts and washers will keep the insulation in place. So I cut it off flush with the keg, but that's not going to work because I need to put a mortar over this to seal the kale wall. So I need to recut it and incise it, probably about a quarter inch, and then put the mortar on top of that. So I need to put about an inch and a half size hole in there to fit my burner. Hole cutting bit would make it easy. I don't have that, so I'm gonna use a Dremel. This is definitely not the right tool for the job. So I used my angle grinder to get the bulk of it out of there. And then I went back to the Dremel to clean up the edge. So 
Does it work? Technically, yes. Is it the best tool? No. Also, the hole needs to be made into a bit more of an oval shape so the burner is directed more to the side. So two inches of ceramic insulation is more than enough to insulate it. But the chamber space is a little bigger than I'd like. You kind of need to build the furnace to the crucible you're going to be using. The more air space, the harder it is to heat that up with a smaller burner. Now what I originally was going to do, I was going to take a 10 inch cement footing, stick that in the center, that gives me about an inch of space to fill up with refractory cement. That make the inside really clean looking, hard, durable, it lasts a long time. And it's a great way to do it, from what I've been told. But I've been convinced to not go that route. Because the more refractory cement I have in there, the more of a heat sink it is. The longer it's going to take to heat up, the more propane I'm going to use. So instead, I went back to my local fire brick store and I had them cut off just a half inch blanket. The half inch blanket closes it off to the perfect size for my crucible and I'm not going to get as much of a heat sink with refractory. So I'm going to give this route a try. And in the future if I want a bigger crucible I can take out this half inch blanket and I have a bigger chamber. Now I have to coat the ceramic insulation otherwise when the furnace is running all that toxic dust is going to constantly be blowing up there. So for that I got some Searset refractory mortar. This is rated for over 3000 degrees. It's really strong. It goes on about an eighth of an inch thick. Just a light coating is all it takes. So we've got a problem. We've got some massive cracking going on. I put this on thicker than it should be and because it's an air dry it's pulling apart as it shrinks. So I'm not sure what the best solution is. Two options. I could just fill in the cracks. Option two, I take out the mortar and put in refractory cement. That's going to cure and it'll be a lot harder and stronger than this air dried stuff. It's pretty strong but I just feel like that's going to crumble over time. So instead of patching the cracks, I think I'm going to just take all this out and put refractory in place. Since the lid comes on and off, I want the rim to be durable and strong. So it's not going to just crumble as I move it around. Since I have some leftover refractory, I'll fill some containers and use them as a plinth later on. A little more adjustment to get the burner angle just right. That should create a nice swirling vortex of hot air. It's ugly, but I think it'll hold. So I want to put a really thin coating of this mortar over the insulation. And that's all I need. So this dried and there's quite a bit of cracking. So I'm not sure I'm such a big fan of the air set. It's still protecting the ceramic insulation. So I'm just going to fill in the cracks and we're just going to go with it. I feel like the lid was a little too concave, giving it a bigger chamber than I wanted. So I decided to stuff some ceramic insulation behind the existing just to bulk it out and close that space up a little more. And once again, I'm using refractory cement to make a good durable rim. Cement will be nice and sturdy for the rim, but I still need to coat the ceramic insulation. I ran out of the Sair set, but I didn't really like this stuff anyway. So now I'm going to try Green Patch 421. We'll see if I like this better. The Green Patch 421 seems to have little fibers in there, and that should make it stronger and crack less when it dries. So 
So the green patch 421 still cracked, but I don't think quite as badly as the Cerset did. Just one more thing. So I've got two sections of pipe and one fits right inside the other. I'm hoping I can use this to make a swivel for the lid. I'm welding the steel pole on there to hold up my swivel mechanism. The idea behind this is when I swivel the lid out of the way, it will also lift up and off the rim. It's tacked up. Let's see if it works. So it seals nice and tight, but it lifts up and doesn't grind across the rim as I open it. Nice. So I'll take some of the refractory that I put in the container and I'll use that as my plinth. Let's go test it. So I've done a couple of cycles where I'll heat it up and then let it cool, heat it up and let it cool. And hopefully all the water is out of there. So when I fire it up to full blast, it won't crack. So let's see how long it takes for it to melt a copper bar. So unfortunately, the chamber is too big for the burner I have. I wasn't able to reach melting point of copper, so I had to do some drastic modifications. We're gonna try it again. I ended up cutting out a three and a half inch section just to make the chamber shorter. I should have done this from the very start. It would have made things so much easier. So once I cut out the middle section, then I just put the top section back on and welded it back together. I just didn't want to have to re-pour my refractory cement rim and everything. And this actually was easier. So I had to redo the inside, but it's looking good. Let's give it another try. So there we have it, a successful keg furnace build. It can melt copper, got temperatures about 2300 degrees, that's enough for a bronze pour. Now I do think it would be better if I had the chamber even smaller, or a bigger burner. To be honest, I prefer my propane furnace better. Uses less fuel, gets the temperature faster, but for the bigger melts, this is gonna work great. If you have any suggestions, leave it in the comments. That's how I built this furnace. Hope you enjoyed that. 